Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part two of a two-parter using the Symphony Cache Component. In the first one we set up and we use the Symphony Cache Component in a non-Symphony Framework project and also within a Symphony Framework project. If you haven't watched that one then I'll leave a link at the top of the screen, you can go and watch that one first. In this one we're going to build on it, I'm going to show you some tips for how to manage your cache pools and also your items using things like namespaces and tags and using the console I'll show you some commands that you can use for managing your cache pools and removing items etc and like promised we're also going to set up redis which is a much faster caching system than using file system some information first i record in high resolution so there's no need for you to watch on a blurry screen choose high definition if that will work for you would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? That sounds like you. All you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and welcome. What I'm going to start off by showing you in this recording is a way of naming things and tagging things in order to make this stuff more manageable. So for my file system adapter here, I can pass in a namespace as the argument which I've given app.cache. Another thing you can do is you can tag your cache items. This is really useful. By giving tags to your cache items, it means that you can sort of group them into different categories, overlapping categories. And it means if you want to get rid of a certain section or a certain group of items that all have the same tag, then that's very easy to do. The more thought that you put into the stuff, the easier it will make life because caching, it's not like a database where you have tools and you can go and see what's in your database. Once things are in the cache, sometimes it's a bit like a black box and it's hard to know exactly what's in there and how everything's organised. So put thought into how you name things and also, if you need to, take advantage of things like tagging. I'll show you how we do that. So as you can see, on my cache item there, I've set it a tag of user. In order to take advantage of tagging, we have to wrap everything in a tag aware adapter which is what i'm going to do with my file system adapter here by doing this it means i'm still using the file system adapter but it is tag enabled so i can apply tags to all my cache items what i've done here is i've created a new cache item called user account one I'm just going to change these variables to also say account one and then i need to go to the browser and i'm just going to hit refresh and this will add the new item to the cache and then what I'll do is I'll go and add a couple more items and I'm just going to give these um, tags as well. So I'll create an account too. I'll create another uh, user if you like. This will be pretty much exactly the same as that first cache item, obviously changing the array details. And I'll also leave it with the same tag of user because I want to have a couple of things with the same tag and then something else which has a different tag. So this is account three. I'm going to just change the details such as the name. But the main change I'm going to make to this is I'm going to add a different tag. So you can pass in a single tag or you can pass in an array of tags. And what I'm going to do is have an admin tag for this one also. This cache item now belongs to two groups. It belongs to user and it also belongs to admin. Let's go over and add this to the cache by hitting refresh. And then what I can do is I can remove items from the cache that belong to certain groups or which have certain tags. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I do it like this. Cache, invalidate tags, and then you pass in an array of the tags which you wish to invalidate. I'm just going to invalidate the admin tag in this case, which means that that third tag, account three, should be removed from the cache. And I should be left with just the first two items in the cache. So I just need to go over to the browser to give that a refresh in order for that change to take place. John Doe is now a miss, that is account three. Let's change this to account two. This one had the user tag only, so this one shouldn't be removed. Let's check that in the browser, refresh. Jane Doe is still in the cache. Gary Clark is still in the cache. So only cache item three, account three, was removed from the cache because that had a tag of admin. What I'll show you now is a way of getting multiple items from the cache. So you don't also have to get just singular items by just changing the get item to get items and passing an array of keys. What you'll actually get back is a generator object. So you won't get an array of items back, you'll get a generator object. But a generator object is something which you can actually loop over. 
as you can see here, I'm passing in an array of my keys. So I've got user account one and user account two. This is the documentation for the generator class on the PHP official docs and it implements the iterator. So let's have a look at the iterator interface. As you can see, it says interface for external iterators or objects that can be iterated themselves internally. And at the bottom, you can see here a little example where it uses for each. So that's pretty good, and that's what we're gonna do. If you're not familiar with these uh, interfaces and classes on the right hand side here, traversable, iterator aggregate, throwable, array access, serializable, generator, it's stuff that I cover in my object oriented PHP course. So if you're new to this stuff or if it's something you want to brush up on, there's a little resource for you. Okay, back to the code. So I'll just remove this and as you can see inside the conditional, I removed a lot of the code and I've just left it so that it's going to echo miss if it's not a hit and it'll echo hit if it is a hit. So I'll grab that, pull it into the for each loop. I'm just gonna loop over each of the cache items and I'm gonna ask, is it a hit? And I'll also include my user account three in this. So hopefully I should see two hits and one miss because user account three had the admin tag and the admin tag was invalidated and there you have it two hits and one miss just as we expected let's now switch back over to symphony framework and have a look at some of the stuff that we can do with that so if you recall the way that we created our cache pool was we use this cache equals new file system adapter so now i've shown you that i'm going to show you a better way of doing it which is to auto wire it as a service so if you want to see which services can be auto wired here's how you check php bin console debug auto wiring and then you can just give it a argument so i'm passing cache and here are our cache auto wireable types the one we're going to use is this cache interface no doubt there's multiple advantages to doing it this way but the biggest advantage i found is it just makes it so much more easier to track and manage your cash pools things like testing will certainly be much easier doing it this way let's go over and just run this again to make sure everything's still working perfect so i'm going to do it for all four of them tesla shopify and apple everything's back in the cache let's move on so at the moment we're using the default cash app pool but you can actually create your own custom pools which can be useful if you want to have more organization you want to use this pool for caching these things that pool for caching those things so i'm creating one and i'm going to call it stocks cache the adapter is still going to be the same so i'm saying cache adapter file system i.e the file system adapter and by naming it the way that i did there simply makes it easy for me to inject i just call this stocks cache using snake case or stocks and cash with an uh, uppercase C. And obviously I need to change it in this place here. And now I should be using my stocks cash pool rather than the cash app pool, which is the default. I'll refresh this. So as you can see, it's now a miss. Refresh again, it should be a hit. So that's in the cash. Let me show you how you can use the console to manage some of this stuff. So you don't want to be diving into the code to try and delete individual keys. You can actually do it using console commands and that is php bin console cache colon pool colon delete you need the cache pool name which in my case is stocks cache and then i just need a cache key and there you go so i've used apple successfully deleted you can also clear out a whole pool with cache colon pool clear again you need the cache pool name this time i'll clear out the cache app which is the default uh, cache pool and you can also clear out multiple cache pools. So I'll clear out cache app and also stocks cache at the same time. So that's a pretty good way to manage your pools and your keys. Up until now, we've used the file system cache, which is the easiest setup. You can just do that straight out of the box. But like I said, in part one, it is the slowest. Something like Redis or Memcache is going to be a lot quicker. So what we're going to do is give that a go. Here I am on Packagist. Because in order for PHP to talk to Redis, we're going to need a client. By far the most popular client for this is Predis. I can grab that with Composer Require, Predis, Predis. I wish everything was that easy to remember. So over to the console, paste that in there. Predis installs. Step one complete. I can now change my adapter to cache adapter Redis. 
and I need a provider key, the provider is going to be the address of Redis. And at the moment, I don't have that, but I'm going to pull in Redis using Symfony's integration with Docker because I'm going to use the Symfony local server. So it's important how I name this environment variable here because when the web server detects that Docker Compose is running for the project, it automatically exposes some environment variables and that is done using prefixes. There are a handful of supported services. Redis is one of those as well as other things like MySQL, Postgres, etc. Here's the list and as you can see, the Symfony default prefix for the Redis service is Redis underscore I'm now going to switch over to the uh, Redis page on Docker Hub and just check out some image tags. So the one I'll take is this one, 6.2 hyphen Alpine. The only software you need to have installed in order to follow along is Docker Desktop. As you can see, I already have a service here because for my database, I'm using Postgres, a Docker image for Postgres. I didn't want to push that onto you because I prefer that you use whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you usually use for your database. And the same thing goes for Redis. If you've got Redis on your machine, then use that. Do whatever works for you. Now that Docker exists, I tend to install as little as possible. I keep with PHP on my machine because that runs a lot faster than running it in a container on a Mac. But as you can see there, getting Redis using Docker is literally three lines in a Docker Compose file. One other thing I should mention is that you must have the Redis PHP extension installed. I've recently upgraded to PHP 8, so I had to install it using this command on a Mac. Just Google whatever you need to do for your operating system. And then for my final step, I just need to run Docker Compose up hyphen D to run it detached, which means run it in the background so I can get my terminal back. And then what I'm going to do is go over, refresh things and see if Redis is working. And it looks like it is. Things don't always go that smoothly, but I think the Docker integration with Symfony and the Symfony local web server have really helped out with a lot of this stuff. Here's something you should look out for. Now that we're using the Symfony server, we can't delete stocks like this. As you can see, environment variable not found. Redis URL. In order for our Docker service environment variables to be read, we need to use this command instead, symphony console. And the rest of the command is exactly the same. So cache colon pool colon delete stocks cache. And we'll remove the Amazon key. Cache item Amazon was successfully deleted. Have a go yourself if you can remember how we cleared out the whole pool. Cache pool clear. And again, we need the pool name. So stocks cache and the cache was successfully cleared. So that brings us to the end of caching. Hope that you've enjoyed this one and that you found it useful. If you do have any questions, comments or feedback, then leave those down in the discussion below. I do read and respond to them all. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share with other developers if you want to help others like yourself. That's what good developers do. And one other thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe, hit the little notification icon. I release new recordings two times a week. Details on my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube channel homepage.